Okay? All right. I like that. Uh, tonight, we're going to continue our journey on the Holy Spirit, walking with the Spirit. And tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit. How many believe that the Holy Spirit speaks? The Holy Spirit speaks, okay? So tonight's message is simply entitled, The Voice of the Holy Spirit, Look Who's Talking. You remember that movie? Look Who's Talking. And it's God who is talking. So the question is, is does the Spirit of God still speak? And the answer is yes. I promise you that God does not have bronchitis. He has not lost his voice. He still speaks, and if we're listening, good things will happen. Uh, God has never stopped speaking. God is speaking to mankind. From the beginning of time, let's remember what God created mankind for. Relationship. Okay? He created us for relationship purposes. And one of the key components to any good relationship is communication. Correct? If you don't talk to somebody, you don't know that person. You have to communicate with them in order to get to know them. And this is what God created mankind for. God has been trying to communicate with us from the beginning. Come into the garden and he would fellowship with Adam and Eve. There was communication. The spirit of God was speaking. And God is still speaking. We live in a time when it is an essential thing that you know the voice of the Holy Spirit. We just come out of a pandemic. And God forbid that uh, we're hoping and praying that it's just over, Right? We have found out the, how necessary it is to be able to hear the Spirit of God, to be able to know the Spirit's voice. We have just, we're sitting here on television, you cut on and you see wars and rumors of other wars that may start. We need to hear the voice of the Spirit of God. And Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, it says this. It says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. It's a beautiful passage of scripture. I like to paraphrase it like this for this day and age. Whether you are tossed, not whether you turn, whether you are tossed to the right or tossed to the left, your ears will hear a voice saying to you, swim in this direction. <laughs> because we're in a little bit of a, a crazy time in life. And we get tossed to and from. And we need to hear the voice of the Spirit tell us, which direction we need to swim in, which direction that we need to go. This is not up here on the slides, but I want you to write this down. Acts chapter 28, verse 25 through 26. And I just want to build the case for the Spirit of God speaking. It says this, the Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your ancestors. Who spoke the truth? Who spoke the truth? Who spoke the truth? Hold that note. There you go. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your ancestors when he said, through Isaiah the prophet, go to these people and say, you will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceive, uh, perceiving. The Holy Spirit spoke. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 through 11, write it down. It says this. It says, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, who said it? Who said it? That's because he speaks. Today, if you hear his voice, beautiful passage of scripture, do not harden your hearts as when you were provoked, uh, when they provoked me as in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tried me by testing me and saw my works for 40 years. He says, if you hear the spirit's voice, do not harden your heart. John, 13, John 16, verse 13, write it down. Just building the case. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. I got good news for us, Grace Valley. The spirit of God is still speaking. God has not lost his voice. God has not gone silent on mankind, that God, the Spirit of God, is still speaking, and if we will listen, great things will happen. As a matter of fact, Jesus says this in John chapter 10, verse 27 through 29. I love it. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. My sheep hear my voice. 
Now, I want to capture this right here. I just want to stop here for a moment. My sheep hear my voice. And the word voice there, the Greek word, this is pretty cool. It is, the Greek word is phone. And it is spelled P-H-O-N-E. Phone. The scripture is literally saying, my sheep hear my phone. God is so cool, isn't he? I love studying the word of God. I do. The things that, 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 that you find here. He says, my sheep hear my phone. In other words, the people I have on my phone, you can call my phone and there is a general ringtone. But if my wife calls, that's a different ringtone. I need to make sure that that captures my attention. And that goes a little bit like this. When wife or children call, my ringtone is the Batman theme song, okay? <laughs> Batman, Batman. Da -da 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 -da. That's, that's the, makes me feel like a hero, okay? Listen. Do you know God's got a ringtone? It's about relationships. That when we're dialing in with him, when we're calling him, when he's speaking to us, what he's telling us is simply this. I've got a special ringtone for you. That I know when it's you calling me. And that we are going to have a conversation and it's not going to be a one-way conversation where you do all the speaking. God, give me. God, give me. God, give me. God, do this. God, do this. God, do this that there has to come a moment in our conversation with God that we remember that the Spirit also speaks and that any productive uh, uh, conversation or communication means that I talk and then I... Have you ever had a conversation with someone who all they do is do all the talking? You see them and you almost start going... Let's be honest. God speaks, we listen. We speak, he listens. It is a, it's back and forth. It's back and forth. This is relationship. This is communication. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will ever snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. So here's the question. How does the Spirit of God speak? We're going to go through a, a number of points on how the Spirit of God speaks to us. Number one, write this down. He speaks through his word. This is the first way that God speaks to his children. He speaks through his word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, 17 says this. All scripture is God-breathed, and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is what we call the Lagos word. The Lagos word, the Greek word for this is Lagos, and what it means, the, it means the written word of God, okay? It means the written word of God. So God speaks through his word, and the first way he speaks through his word is he speaks through the Lagos, word of God. It is the written word of God. It is the Bible. So when you're sitting down and you're reading what's on the pages there, this is Lagos. This is word of God. And everything you ever hear in your life should go back and line up with that Lagos, word of God. If it is not written, when Jesus told the devil, when the devil said, listen, why don't you toss yourself off this mountain? Doesn't the Bible say that God sent his angels and they would catch you? He said, that ain't Legos. That's not written. That's not how that's meant. Everything that we believe that God is telling us, it should correlate. It should be compatible with what is written in God's word. Rhema word is the second one. God may give you a rhema word. Now, what is a rhema word? A rhema word is a right now word. It is a word from him. It is a word from the spirit of God that gives you a sense of direction. It brings joy and excitement about the things of God. A rhema word is a word that, that, that is for your current situation, telling you what to do and giving you specific direction at that time. 
A scripture that will show us rhema word is Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says this. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the rhema of God. A right now word from God. You ever been doing something and you get a right now word from God and it lifts your faith up? You ever been speaking and you get a right now word from God and you get clarity and direction? God wants to give you a rhema word, a right now word. Some of you may be going through some circumstances and some situations in your life even tonight and you need a rhema word. Here's the thing about the Lagos word. The Lagos written word of God, since God is speaking to us through his word, when I am reading my word, guess what? He's speaking to me. When I'm not reading my word, if I live a life where I don't read the word of God, guess what? Silence. I have silenced them. I silenced them. If I live a life where I read the word, God's going to speak. He's going to speak to me through his word. If I live a life where I don't read the word on a consistent basis, he, he's not speaking something to me in here that I don't know. I've never read it. That's why you meet unbelievers who will say stuff like this to you when they see you doing something that they think is wrong. They'll go, they'll say, don't the Bible say something about you not doing that? <laughs> you ever heard somebody say that to you? I, I thought the Bible say, don't the Bible say something about Christians ain't supposed to be swimming? You're like, huh? Yeah, Jesus, didn't Jesus say, come follow me? And Peter was by the water, and he ain't want to swim in the water, and he said, come follow me. No, that ain't what it was about, brother, okay? You hear unbelievers who don't know the word who will say, doesn't the Bible say? But you're a child of God. You know what the Bible says because God has spoken to you. Have you ever studied your word and all of a sudden there was a scripture that just jumped off the paper? It was like an explosion happened in your heart. You could have read that scripture a million times. You've been saved for 30 years. You have read that scripture, John 3, 16, a billion times. But today it just jumped off the page. That's rhema. It's God saying you need this and you need it right now because of what you're going, to, going through. It's God saying I'm going to give you this word and I'm going to give you this word right now. A rhema word. There are people who have said that God has told them to do really strange things. There are people who have walked up to people and said, you know, God told me you're my wife. That's, that's interesting, because I'm already married. <laughs> that ain't a random word. That's a wrong word. Doesn't line up with Scripture. Doesn't line up with the Lagos word of God. You understand what I'm saying? If it doesn't line up with what is written, that's what Jesus said to the devil when he would come and he tempted him. He said, it is written. That doesn't line up with what my father said. It has to be written. It needs to line up with what God said. Listen, a rhema word can save somebody's life. I was talking to, I believe it was Miss Ortega a couple uh, weeks ago, and she was sharing with me a story of uh, uh, how she had a family member uh, who was in need, and she had no idea. She was just minding her own business, doing what she was doing that day. And uh, she said all of a sudden she got this, this sense, this feeling, like she needed to go to her and to one of her family members and visit them that something was wrong. She said she grabbed one of her children, she went down to her family member's house. She said she began to knock on the door and the person would not answer the door. And she said that was unusual. So she knew something at that moment was wrong. And if I'm correct, I believe she said she went to the window and she could look in the window and she could see that something physically had happened to one of her loved ones. She was able to make a call and it saved her life. It will open up your eyes. I remember I was driving down the street one day. And I kept hearing the word, my daughter Destiny, she would say this. Perez, you would appreciate this. My daughter Destiny would always say when she was little, if daddy didn't put on his seatbelt, don't look at me like that. Okay? Just judgmental eyes. No. She would always say, daddy, red man, red man, red man. And what she meant was the seatbelt guy that came on if I didn't have my seatbelt. When she was little, Daddy, red man, red man, red man. Rhema word. 
Little did I know. I drive down. I, I get in the car one day. Destiny's not in the car with me. And I hear, I sit down and get in my car, start driving, and I get to the corner and I hear, red man, red man, red man. And I actually look back thinking, man, did I? <laughs> and I put my seatbelt on. I went a block further. I was hit and tossed into a ditch. And the guy took off. A rhema word very likely saved my life. Red man, red man, red man. The second way that God speaks to us, he speaks to us through wisdom. So the spirit of God speaks through wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5, it says this, if any of you lacks wisdom, and I'm going, man, there's a whole planet of us here. It's a whole planet of people who need this scripture, right? You should ask God. We need a t-shirt that says that. You need to ask God. Ask God for what? Wisdom. Who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. God wants to give you wisdom. The Spirit of God will speak wisdom to your life. We may receive wisdom from others, okay? There are people that you greatly respect that you will go and you will have a conversation with. This is just practical teaching here tonight, okay? If you know an awesome man or woman of God, you know somebody who is in a career or occupation that you, are, that you desire to go into, you know somebody that's been married longer than you have and still look at each other with admiration in their eyes for one another. I'm not talking about the people who live like roommates. I'm talking about the people who look like they like each other, okay? If you still see people like that, those are people that you need to say, Spirit of God, speak to me. Speak to me. You meet wonderful couples like this. Look at these beautiful couples. Okay, look at these beautiful couples. Go to them. I'm a younger couple. We're a younger couple. I ask questions. <laughs> Hi, talk to me. Because I want to make it there too. And you know what the Spirit of God will do? He'll speak to them and give you wisdom. He'll speak to them and give you wisdom. Whatever you desire. Find somebody, whatever your passion is, find somebody and just ask questions. The Spirit of God will speak wisdom through the years to you. Listen, you might even find yourself in a situation where you just need God to speak to you in a tough situation. I remember that uh, Delisha, Delisha, you were going to, uh, we were going to the, going out for ice cream. We were going off ice cream, and we were just going off ice cream, and then we ended up having a baby that day, didn't we? Yeah. That's what ice cream would do for you. That's why I don't buy chocolate chip ice cream to this day, okay? We weren't prepared to have a baby that day, but we ended up at Covenant Hospital that day. The ice cream melted, and Brianna showed up. And it was an emergency. Found out that they had miscalculated and that Brianna had been in there way too long. And we had a little bit of wisdom come from the doctor. You gotta have that baby today. I've come to give you a little bit of information as well, a little bit of wisdom today as well. Some of you, you gotta have that baby today. That dream that's inside of you. I believe God is saying to you, it's time for that thing to come birth, to give birth this year. That thing that's inside of you, I believe that God is saying it's time for that thing to come forth out of you this year. That thing you've been contemplating, I believe it's time for that thing to give birth out of you this year. God wants to do something awesome in your life. You don't need wisdom to pick out the color of your dress or your shirt. You just, but you do need wisdom for the direction for your life. You don't need wisdom on what type of haircut you're going to get. Well, I won't always say that. But, uh, you know, <laughs> but you do need direction for who you might marry. You don't need wisdom on whether or not you should brush your teeth or take a bath. But you should. <laughs> but you do need wisdom on how to lead your family. 
This is just practical teaching tonight. Wisdom is a practical thing, and the Spirit of God will use it to lead us. The third thing that the Spirit of God will do when he speaks to us, he will speak through a whisper. He will speak through a whisper. I love this passage of Scripture, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 through 13. It says, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not even in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, and he went out, and he stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here? Listen, let me tell you what a whisper means. Because the Spirit of God often whispers to you. It is a sign of closeness. A whisper is a sign of closeness. You see, the closer you are to someone, the more you lower your tone of voice. It wouldn't make sense for me to stand in front of my wife this close and scream at the top of my voice. She would think I was angry or something, or a madman. The closer you get to someone, the lower you make your tone. Closer in with God. Let me back this up again. The closer you get to someone, the lower you make your voice when you talk to them. God or Jesus? Jesus said, I've got to go, and the Holy Spirit will go. Outside voice? What does the Holy Spirit do? inside voice. He whispers to you. And he can whisper because he says, I'm that close to you. I'm that close to you. God, when he speaks to us, he uses not his outside voice, he uses his inside voice. And he whispers to us, I'm that close to you. He came from heaven to earth to show the way from heaven and earth to whisper to every single one of us. What voice do you think that God uses? He uses his inside voice. He whispers. Why? Because he's so close to us. He is actually on the inside of us using his inside voice. He is not on the outside screaming. He's on the inside of us whispering. And God uses his inside voice with us, not his outside voice. I don't whisper from a distance when I'm talking to the people that I love. I do. She would say, what? What? Here's what happens when you whisper. You get close. You get close. And the closer you get, It is, a, it is an issue of closeness. And you know what I notice? I notice that in mankind, we whisper when we want to say something important or we want to say something that's private. Do you know that God does the same? He does the same. Watch this. It says in the scripture, Psalms 25, 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. That God also whispers secret things. It's a beautiful picture. That God also whispers secret things. Repeat after me. God, whisper to me. whisper is a message just to you. It is a private message. It makes me think of this. It makes me think of when the kids came to Jesus 
And the Bible says that he was laying his hands on children and the disciples said, kids, go away. Don't bother Jesus. And Jesus says, no, let them come. The Bible tells us that he was laying his hands on them and he was blessing them. The word blessed there is uli ego, and it comes from our word eulogize. Where do we use the eulogy? We use it at a funeral. The word eulogize means to speak well of. It means that you are standing at a funeral speaking well of the person who is now gone. But what Jesus was showing us is that we use the eulogy or we eulogize people the wrong way. Jesus says, no, eulogize people, speak well of them before they're gone. Eulogize them, speak well of them while they are young. And I can imagine Jesus was eulogizing them. He was not only laying his hands on them and blessing them. I can imagine Jesus would take a moment and say, you imagine who those children walked away and what they walked away with that day? A whisper from the Spirit of God. We sang the song, You Are My Confidence. Is that how it went? It says, could you imagine how confident you would be if they just whispered in your ear and told you who you were? Guess what? and telling us who we are. Fourth one, wonders. Signs and wonders. I had to keep a W, so I had to call it wonders, okay? Didn't want to mess it up. Peter, the scripture tells us, Lord, if you are, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and he came towards Jesus. He was saying, Jesus, I need a wonder. I need signs and wonders to let me know that this is the Spirit of God. This is God doing this. And Jesus said, come. Some of us have been saying the same thing. God, if you want me to go and do this, I need a sign. I need a wonder. Tell me to come and keep doing it. The Spirit of God is speaking. How about Gideon when he threw out a fleece and he said, Jesus, if this is you, I need you to speak. I'm going to throw out this fleece and you know that the dew hits the ground and the blankets get wet. If this is you, I'm going to throw this on the ground. The ground should all be wet and this fleece should be dry. He goes out, fleece is dry. But you know what we do? We go, okay, that's miracle number one. Let me tell you the next thing I need you to do, Jesus. We just, we, we just keep throwing things out. Here's the thing. God will do signs and wonders. And the Spirit of God will speak through signs and wonders. All through our scriptures we see it. But here's the question. When he speaks through signs and wonders, do you believe it? Because we would like to say, man, if God would do that, now I would understand, I would have heard that. That would be more like a shout, not a whisper. Really? Let's, let me tell you about the people of God who went through the wilderness three years of life. Manna from heaven. The Red Sea splitting. Making it through the wilderness. God feeding them. God cloud by day, cloud by day, fire by night. Miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. The Holy Spirit is speaking through every miracle. You are my children. I got you. And when they get to the promised land, they go, we still don't believe you. But if you would do one more thing. One more thing, Jesus. The Holy Spirit speaks through signs and wonders. But the question is, at what point do you hear and believe and say, okay. Last one, worship. Worship. I don't know personally if there's any 
greater time of my life when the Spirit of God is speaking to me than when I'm in worship. When I we go back to that whisper, when I said that God whispers secrets, when I'm in my secret place. Isn't it funny that he calls it that? When I'm in my secret place and God begins to speak to me. The question is, is where is my secret place? I began to look back over my life as we were putting this message together and I began to go back and go, where were my secret places? Where were my secret places? I go, okay, when I was at my mom's house, my, my secret place was my bedroom. When I, that was where I would go and meet with God. And then somewhere between my mom's house and college, my secret place was in my, my, my uh, teal blue citation with a hole in the floor. <laughs> but I would cut worship music on and, and I would meet with God in any parking lot sitting in my teal blue citation. And I said, when I got to college, my, my secret place, that place where God would meet me and whisper, that place of worship, that place of prayer, oh, it was the Catholic church that was on campus. And they would just leave it open for students. Interesting enough, many Catholics met there. I wasn't Catholic. So the way I went about what I was doing was probably a little strange. Then when we moved to Detroit, the house wasn't that big, so my secret place, the place where God would whisper to me was in my living room. And then when we moved down to Down River, Detroit, to Lincoln Park, and I was on staff at a church there for a number of years, we even had a smaller place that was over the church that they gave us as a form of compensation. They gave us an apartment to live in. And I could stand in my living room, my bathroom, in the kitchen at the same time. True story. True story. And it was my secret place. It was a place where God whispered. And when we moved back to Saginaw, there was this whisper. I was living on the south side of Saginaw. There was on Linton Street, and there was just this little room to the back of the house. It was just something somebody added on to the house. And I said, that's my place. It's where I meet with God. And he whispers secrets. I remember one day God said to me, he said, I want you today. I was praying because I felt like God had called me to the nations. And I felt like he had still, he was still telling me, Brian, there's more for you. I'm going to put you on places where, where your voice will be heard, where you can proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. True story. And I heard the spirit just speak to me, whispered. He said, go through the house today and open every door. He said, everything that has a hinge on it, open it and close it. Amazing how many doors is in that tiny house. And when I would forget something, God would say, You forgot something. And I'd go and open and close, 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 open and close. I was opening and closing everything that had a hinge on it. And I said, What is this about? And God said, By faith, I'm going to open doors for you now. I promise you, I was doing a little bit of speaking to then all of a sudden I got a phone call from a guy by the name of Pay Cutter. And I told my wife, and my wife will tell you this, I said, man, I'm out here doing this. I said, but what I'm missing, I said, I'm missing something. And when I got back and me and Kurt ended up meeting, I got back, I said, you wouldn't believe what these guys are doing. I said, this is exactly what I was telling you about. She says, yes, it is. And then for 15 years, every door that I opened in my house, every door that got opened and we went from thousands of students thousands of students the spirit and the bride they say come the bride come and have a moment of worship just a moment of worship find our secret place stand to your feet and let's just come
Stand to your feet and let's just come. Maybe you want to spread out in the sanctuary. Here's how I want to end this tonight. You can spread out. You can come to the altar, but come. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Let's activate. Let's activate. Let's activate. Where's your secret place? Where's that place where God whispers? Find that, that place of worship where God will whisper to you. Yeah. Come on, let's go after him for just a moment here. Pastor Kelly. Surely love and mercy, your peace.
situation or circumstance that you need him to address, just speak to him. Mighty God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that you love us so much that you allow your voice to remain in our lives. safety of your voice. We thank you that you consider us worthy enough to whisper to you, Lord God. I ask that this week, Lord, you speak to us through your word. I ask that this week that you would speak to us as we seek out wisdom and counsel from God and your people. We ask that you would speak for God, that you would speak through wonders, God. God, that you would speak through our worship, our time of prayer with you. That we would not allow life to steal away that prayer. That place where you whisper to us.
Listen, this is where I wanted to get us to tonight as a body. I wanted to get us right here in that secret place where he whispers. I want you to notice one of the things that started to happen when that when we got there. He did start to activate. This is what Paul talks about when he says, stir up the gift that is inside of you from the time there was laying of hands upon you. You get in the secret place, you get in the presence of God and gifts begin to, they begin to activate. It's like putting popcorn in a pan and turning, sitting on the thing. All of a sudden it just starts popping. It just starts popping. And it's a beautiful thing. There are gifts inside of us. And God wants to use them. The Spirit of God has given them to us. Not only does he speak, but he is a gift giver. Holy Spirit, activate our gifts in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. We will be back here next Wednesday night. We will also see you on Sunday. Love on somebody before we go tonight, okay? Please love on somebody before we go tonight. Thank you for joining us.